season is here. It's the time of year where kittens are entering shelters in huge numbers, oftentimes without a mother. Most of the time this is because well-meaning people find kittens outside and assume that they've been abandoned, when really the mother is usually right down the block. So if you find a kitten outside and they don't appear to be in immediate danger, please wait at least two to three hours to see if the mother does return. Nobody's better at taking care of a little kitten than their own mama. But if you've found a kitten and you're sure that she's an orphan, she's going to need special care, and that includes bottle feeding. Whether you've found a kitten outside or signed up to foster for your local shelter, here are my top tips for safely bottle feeding kittens. Are you hungry? Tip number one, get the right supplies. Motherless neonatal kittens have sensitive systems that require a special kitten formula, not just any dairy product you have in the fridge. It's extremely dangerous to feed a kitten the wrong thing, so please never feed a kitten something she won't be able to digest. Never feed a kitten cow's milk, condensed milk, soy milk or other dairy alternatives, human baby formula, or even cat milk. Cat milk is a product that's sold at stores as a supplemental treat for adult cats, but it's not kitten formula. Instead, you want to pick up something that says kitten formula, such as one of these products. Kitten formula is specially formulated to provide a proper balance of vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and a caloric pattern that mimics the content of a mother cat's milk. I have links to some of the products that I like at kittenlady.org slash supplies. While picking up your kitten formula, you'll also want to pick up a kitten bottle and perhaps an extra set of nipples. Most nipples will not come pre-cut, meaning you'll have to cut a hole in them yourself. There are a lot of different ways that people do this, including cutting an X or cutting a V into the nipple. My preferred method is to cut the nipple on an angle so that just a small hole is visible. Cutting the hole properly is important because it will determine the flow of the formula while the kitten is nursing. To ensure proper flow, test the hole by turning the bottle upside down. The formula should slowly drip out one drop at a time if the hole is the correct size. If you turn it upside down and nothing flows out, you need to enlarge the hole. If you turn it upside down and it flows too quickly, then you'll have to try again with a new nipple. Because there's so much room for human error with traditional nipples, I like to recommend a product called a Miracle Nipple. A Miracle Nipple is a specialty product you can buy online. It's a hard rubber nipple with a hole already cut into it and it can attach to a syringe for smaller kittens or get popped onto a bottle lid like this. These are great because the hole is already cut, so it offers a steady flow, and they come in a few different sizes for different ages of kittens. I have links to these on my website at kittenlady.org slash supplies. Okay, so once you have your supplies, it's time for tip number two, preparing the bottle properly. In order to prepare the bottle properly, you want to make sure that you're making your formula fresh, clump-free, and comfortably warm. You want to make your formula fresh every one to two feedings to ensure that the formula is safe for consumption, so don't make a big jug of it to serve throughout the day. Follow the preparation instructions for the formula you purchase, and make sure that any powder you don't use gets sealed and put in the refrigerator right away. If you're using a powder formula, mix the powder thoroughly with warm water according to the instructions until it's completely smooth. You might benefit from using a product like a smoothie shaker, which will break up the formula's clumps. It's important that the formula is clump free because a clump can clog the bottle and result in a lot of frustration for both you and the kitten. Finally, make sure that your formula is the right temperature. You can mix your powder formula with warm water, but if you're using an already mixed formula that you've saved in the fridge, you're going to want to get it to the right temperature before you feed. Some people do this with a quick 8 second zap in the microwave, and other people use a tea kettle method. You can pour boiling water into a mug, Place the bottle in the mug and let it float for about 20 seconds. Shake up the bottle thoroughly and test it on the inside of your wrist to ensure that it's comfortably warm. Remember that if the temperature is too hot or too cold for your skin, it's definitely not the right temperature for a tiny kitten. Once you've got your bottle ready, it's time for tip number three, properly feeding your kitten. Before you reach for a bottle, make sure that it's safe to feed the kitten. Because kittens cannot self-regulate their body temperature, hypothermia may occur in kittens who are orphaned. If the kitten feels cold to the touch or has a temperature of 95 degrees or less, it's not safe to feed her. Focus on gradually increasing her temperature before attempting to feed. Once the kitten is the appropriate temperature, it's time to bottle feed. 
When you're getting ready to feed a kitten, find a comfortable place to put her in your lap or on a table. Always feed the kitten in a natural belly down posture. The kitten should be comfortably lying or seated with her belly towards the floor. You may have seen images in the past of kittens eating on their back like a human baby, but this is very wrong and very dangerous. Feeding a kitten on her back would be like hanging a human from her feet and feeding her a burger. It just doesn't make any sense. Feeding a kitten on her back can cause aspiration, which is where a kitten inhales fluids into the lungs. This is so dangerous, so please, never ever feed a kitten on her back. Think of how a kitten would feed from her mother, on her belly, laying down or sitting next to the mama. Sit the kitten in your lap or on a table, holding the head steady with your non-dominant hand, and introduce the nipple to her mouth with your dominant hand. Don't be scared to really hold the kitten's head. This is how you're going to help direct her towards the food. Invert the bottle so that the formula can slowly flow into the kitten's mouth, but never forcefully squeeze the bottle into her mouth. Instead, you want her to suckle at her own pace. Ideally, the kitten will latch. Latching is when a kitten makes a U-shape with her tongue and suckles to drink the formula. You'll know she's latched when she looks like she's very engaged and active, maybe even with the telltale ear wiggle. Place a finger on her throat to ensure that she's swallowing as she eats. You'll be able to feel each gulp, which will let you know that she's eating properly. Here's what a good latch looks like. So hopefully that's what you're going to get. But just in case, here's tip number four. How to feed fussy kittens. Oh. Getting that perfect latch feels great, but it doesn't always happen. Here are some tips for what to do if you have a fussy kitten that just doesn't want to cooperate. If the kitten doesn't latch, don't panic. Eating out of the side of the mouth is something that some kittens may do at first. And that's okay as long as she is definitely swallowing, and as long as she doesn't have her premolars or molars yet. Kittens who are five weeks or older will have teeth on the side of their mouths that can easily shred a nipple and they could swallow it and cause a blockage. But younger kittens don't have teeth on the side of their mouth yet. So if they do chew on the nipple on the side of their mouth, it's okay as long as your finger is on their throat and you can feel that they are swallowing. If the kitten is fussy and doesn't seem interested in eating, stop what you're doing and try to figure out what the problem is. Sometimes it's just the posture or the flow of the formula. So make sure that you're feeding in a comfortable position and that there isn't something wrong with the bottle. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Is the hole in the nipple big enough? Is there a clump blocking the formula from coming out? All of these things can cause a kitten to just not really know what to do. So make sure that everything's working properly. If the kitten is squirmy or disinterested, remember that it's okay to really handle them. Some people are scared to handle a kitten because of how fragile they are, but you have to remember that the kitten doesn't know what you're trying to do. You have to show them. So hold the head and body stable with one hand. You can even wrap them in a blanket if need be, using the barber shop technique, like this. This can help the kitten stay focused and protect your hands from tiny claws at the same time. You can also help the kitten feel ready to bottle feed by brushing her with a toothbrush or by cradling her face in your hand. This simulates the experience of being nuzzled against a mama's fuzzy belly and being groomed, which can help encourage them to eat. Most importantly, remember to be really patient with your kitten. If they're being really fussy, just remember to take it slow and help solve the problem. It's so important that we get some food in these little guys every couple hours, and you're the only hope they have, so try to be patient with them. Okay, so tip number five, feed the right amount and the right frequency. Young kittens require frequent feeding, so be prepared to care for them around the clock until they're about five or six weeks of age and weaning onto wet food. For the first few weeks of life, that will mean waking up in the middle of the night to feed. Try not to be intimidated by having to wake up in the middle of the night. Even though the care is frequent, it only takes a few minutes of your time, and it makes a huge difference for the little guys. Having small amounts of food every few hours is going to help keep them hydrated and keep them balanced with nutrients and fat that they need for rapid development and weight gain. You'll see that as the kittens get older, the amount they eat will increase, but the frequency of feeding will decrease. That means that the older the kittens are, the longer of a break you'll get between feeding. You can use this feeding chart to determine how much your kitten should be eating and how often. Just remember that each kitten is different, so this is just a guideline, not a rule book. Some kittens vary in weight and development, so use your best judgment while keeping this guide in mind as a helpful baseline. Tip number six, 
Monitor the kitten's progress. Make sure that you have a small digital scale on hand and weigh them daily so that you can monitor how they're doing. Having their weight will help you determine their stomach capacity and how often they should be eating, but it will also help alert you if something's going wrong. Keeping track of a kitten's weight is a great way to ensure that the kitten is making the necessary gains. Weigh the kitten at least once a day and write down her weight in grams. She should be gaining at least 10 grams per day. If the kitten is not gaining weight or if she loses weight, seek immediate veterinary support. My last tip is to remember that it doesn't stop at bottle feeding. You will also be tasked with stimulating the kitten to go to the bathroom, tending to her medical needs, keeping her warm and clean, and otherwise providing her with a safe and secure environment until she's old enough for adoption. After feeding, wipe down the kitten's face so that no formula is sticking to her fur. Gently rub the kitten's genitals with a soft tissue to stimulate her to urinate and defecate. Do this at each feeding, being mindful to wipe up afterwards so that she stays clean and comfortable. Once the kitten has been fed, stimulated, and cleaned up, it's time for her to go back to her warm, safe space until the next feeding. Repeat until the kitten is weaning onto wet kitten food. Good luck with your bottle feeding, and thank you for helping to fight for the little guys.